Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Podcast. I want to review some high yield topics in hepatology. A patient presents to you, mainly asymptomatic, and complains of nonspecific signs of fatigue and right upper quadrant abdominal pain or fullness, along with muscle weakness, jaundice that develops several days after. And patient also says that severe cases of pruritus, anorexia, nausea have occurred within the last few days. Also, if you ask the patient about recent weight gain or weight loss or changes in their abdominal girth, then the patient says that patient has seen an increase and an expansion of the abdominal girth. So what disease are you thinking about in this patient. Well, I'll give you some more information on the physical exam. On the skin, you find stigmata of chronic liver disease, spider nevi, palmar erythema, along with hepatomegaly and ascites. Obviously, you should start thinking of a cirrhotic type picture, but can you really make the diagnosis? just based on the physical exam. You would first need to get the liver function test for your differential diagnosis. And based upon that, you'd find clues to other causes of elevated liver enzymes. So what is an example of this? Well, alcoholic hepatitis. That should be one of your differentials. It's associated with positive history of alcohol use and with hepatomegaly right upper quadrant pain along with some elevations in the liver function tests. However, this patient did not present with a history of alcohol use. Another differential is autoimmune hepatitis where patients have no history of alcohol use um, and they do not have steatotosis but there is a history of diabetes or Graves' disease, or ulcerative colitis, or Sojourn syndrome, or any vasculitis suggesting an autoimmune condition. This patient really did not present with any of these conditions. Next on your differential would be something like hemochromatosis. Well, if that was the case, this patient would have had other important signs on physical exam, like skin hyperpigmentation, Um, In addition to that, patients would have had cardiomyopathy, associated testicular atrophy. All these are high yield points for hemochromatosis. You can also think about some medication induced causes of liver disease and this patient really did not have any history of current medication use. So finally, you are going to narrow down your differential by thinking about some viral hepatitis. Well, if that was the case, the patient would have had a history of some kind of a illicit injection drug use, a risky sexual behavior, or transfusions. This patient really did not present with any of these characteristics. That leaves you to a really important diagnosis on your differential and that is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease also called NAFLD. This is diagnosed in patients who are asymptomatic and these patients present with a elevated ALT, AST and you should order the biomarkers for liver injury and also order the serum bilirubin, albumin, and prothrombin time because you want to rule out some of the other conditions we talked about. And in these cases, one of the important blood tests you should order is looking for bilirubin, albumin, prothrombin, GGT, serum lipids, blood glucose, possibly insulin sensitivity. Imaging studies such as sonography, CT or MRI, and liver biopsy 
are all tests that you should consider and start thinking about as you won't narrow down the differential. So what type of blood test results would you see in this patient with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease? Well, in this condition, the ALT and the AST are going to be elevated, but the ratio of the AST to the ALT is going to be less than 1, because if it's greater than 2, then that's just a alcoholic liver disease cause. The ALKFOS may be elevated, and the liver function tests usually are normal unless there is an underlying cirrhosis or some history of rapid weight loss. But in this patient, you mentioned the increase in abdominal girth, and so that picture is not there. The GGT may be elevated, or it may be normal. And patients may also have a high CRP level. In addition to that, advanced fibrosis can occur in patients with NAFLD and those patients who have normal ALT levels. The important thing to look for is the NAFLD score. And a high NAFLD score and an elevated ALT clue you in on fibrosis and patients who have morbid obesity. Really, this topic of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease is large to cover in one podcast. Some of the important things you want to remember is that biopsy is only reliable method of diagnosing NAFLD and determining the prognosis. You should consider biopsy in specific patients and patients who have diabetes, obesity, advanced age, or their AST to ALT ratio um, that is high should be looked after for preventing advanced liver disease. Now, in terms of the NAFLD score, that score is definitely beneficial for the degree of fibrosis. And our next podcast will cover the details about the proper diagnosis of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. But understand that obesity, metabolic syndrome, lipid metabolism disorders such as hypo-beta-lipoproteinemia, patients who have a history of amiodarone, diltiazem, or tamoxifen use, all of these are prone to getting NAFLD because they lead to steatohepatitis. Keep in mind that the pathogenesis is basically where hepatic steatosis develops when the supply of the fatty acids to the liver actually exceeds the requirements of the patient's triglyceride, phospholipid, and mitochondrial oxidation. So you really have cell injury causing lipotoxicity and release of some these oxidized lipids causing steatosis and cellular injury. Thank you for listening to this podcast. Be sure to tune in and listen to some of the other podcasts to understand how dysfunctions in liver disease can lead to serious pathology. Good luck in medical school and on your board exam. Thank you for listening.